Hey, everybody come in, everybody come in. I want you to sit right down front, okay? You're gonna notice, the first thing you're gonna notice is the tables are a little bit low. They may be lower than what you're used to. Um, this, one of the first things you need to know as a sparkly friend is that sometimes you have to do things a little bit uh, unconventionally, you have to do things a little bit differently. We have to have our tables at electric scooter height because a lot of our special friends unfortunately have a hard time transitioning from their scooters to a chair. So in order to avoid the hassle of it, like summoning their assistant to help them or asking you to help them, um, they'll just stay in their scooters and then we will just remove the chairs and then they will sit at their awkwardly positioned tables. So maybe a little, it may be a little bit uh, higher than what you're used to. Just remember your posture. Remember, Brad's going to go around and show you. Yeah, especially you, Phyllis. Yes, I brought your, I brought this for you. Okay, I know you're new here and you really didn't know, but we should always sparkle. Always. That top just is not going to cut it. You did what? Oh, honey, no, anything below the waist doesn't count at the first date because chances are your special friend will not see you from the waist down. So you need to sparkle from the waist up. You must do that. And you're clearly not. So um, I don't care how much glitter you have on your pants. Um, glitter pants are kind of trashy anyway, so let's avoid that at least for now, okay? So I brought you this. Look. It is a... It is a rhinestone encrusted hair clip. See? Yeah, it has this long pointed part here. Okay, and you, you just put that in your hair anywhere you want to. Try to put it on the side that he can focus on. Which eye is his good eye? The right one. They usually have one that works a little better than the other. So you want to try to be on the side where his right eye can really see you shine. Okay, get right under a light. I see that you've already done that. I know that wasn't deliberate, but you were brilliant without realizing it. So Brad, if you would give this to her. Yeah, make sure make sure you put that on, sweetheart. Okay, let's see. I want to see you effortle effortlessly put that in like that. Just sweep the hair good job good job not the leg the hair sweep the hair there you go you only fumbled a little bit not bad okay excellent well as you may know we have two special things actually three special things going on today of course number one the most important thing melvin proposed to me last night yes applause is appropriate polite applause like this how do sparkly friends applaud? Because anything louder than this can really set off their hearing aids. So you want to remember, no harsh sounds, okay? No harsh sounds. You kind of you kind of whistle your S's when you talk, uh, Cammy. So you want to try to dull that down a little bit. You do. You kind of whistle your S's a little bit when you talk. It's kind of annoying and like you really need to stop saying like because it's like really irritating. And I know for a fact. I know for a fact that Bertrand does not like that. I may or may not have um, laid some tile at his house at one point. Do not do that because that really crawls up his spine and he may not say anything right away, but that Bentley may be the last thing he gives you. Just sort of store that away in the back of your mind, okay? Awesome. So, yes, Melvin proposed. He was so excited. It was so sweet. You should have seen it. It was, it was very basic. We had just gone out to eat and we were walking on the beach. Oh, not a beach here. No, honey. He has a private jet. We weren't even in the country. <laughs> we were walking on the beach. Well, I was walking. He was rolling in his little hover round. And then he had, he had his assistant bring out his walker. Brad, you were there. Oh, don't cry. Don't cry. Don't cry. Stop. Forget about that. Can I, can I please tell my story? We... Stop. Everything is not about you, Brad. Listen, listen, this is very important. This could be you if you will pay attention. Brad's one of my advanced students, of course, a lot of you know that. Um, so he had, he had his assistant bring his walker out. 
you know the kind that has the little um the pad it has the wheels two sides are wheels and two are the little padded things and we got up to the deck up there near the place where we were going to stay for the night and he he had his assistant get him down on one knee it only took about 20 minutes so the anticipation built while I'm trying to figure out if he was dying or if something was going to happen and then he had his assistant get this out of his pocket because unfortunately his arms don't bend very well anymore and he presented me with this he was so excited to tell me that he wanted to marry me that he blew out a tennis ball on his walker it was so romantic it was beautiful I wish all of you could have been there of course you haven't paid enough you're not premium members so None of you were there, but Brad was there. Brad's a little down today. You guys are going to have to be, going to have to understand that Brad is not quite himself. Um, unfortunately, his romance with the teacher has ended, but there's hope. There's hope. I mean, look where we are. Look where we are. We're back at Huntington's place. Yeah. And I happen to know that Huntington Treadwell III is here. Uh, yeah. And he is newly single. <laughs> Sometimes things are better the second time around. You, you shouldn't give up hope. Okay? Well, when my Huntington passed away unexpectedly before I could get the ring, um, he did amend his will before he passed away. And he made me the curator of the Huntington Treadwell uh, Junior Museum here in the West Wing. So I now work here. And since I work here, I can host parties here. I can do things as long as it's related to the museum. So we are going to admire some of Huntington's jewels, but it's dual purpose because we're going to admire them and we're going to see how good you are at being a sparkly friend on a whole new level today. That's the second thing. The third exciting thing is it's my birthday. It's my birthday. Oh, I know you didn't get me anything. That's because you haven't learned to plan ahead yet. That's okay. I'm going to treat myself later. I have I have a black card. I can do whatever I want. Well, Huntington had one, and I may or may not have forgotten to return it. Um, mm -hmm. Okay, well, rule number one, when you feel your jewelry slipping like an earring or something, you cannot let your friends see you fix it because that makes you look like you're not prepared. So wait until they nod off. Don't let them fall down in the lasagna or anything. But, you know, you have to learn to support their head. Like you can, I found that breadsticks work. If you see them nodding and their head is going down, like you have a cake, like my cake here, take a couple breadsticks, unless they have a thin face, like if they have a narrow face, you may have to put it like right here, like one really sturdy breadstick here, and you can use it like like a support, you know, almost like a like a monopod or something. And it can keep them from going completely down in their food. Once you get them anchored properly, then you can adjust your jewelry or your top or, you know, check their wallet or whatever it is that you need to take care of. But you want to appear seamless and perfect in front of your new friend. It's important. Perfection is very important. Um, yes, so today is my birthday politely clap yes like remember you're almost like a seal like Nicole Kidman at that yeah exactly so you want to do this plus for the same reason she was doing it you don't want to damage what hopefully will be very expensive jewelry you may have a lovely collection of your own one day of course that's up to you it depends on how far you want to go and oh Huntington stop okay now here's a lesson now. Everybody look back there at Huntington. I mean, not Huntington, what is your name? <sighs> See, I get you two mixed up all the time. Look at Brad. Brad, look at me, look at me. Maintain composure. You cannot dab your eyes on the napkins because then you're, no, because then you'll get, you'll get stuff on the napkin. You can't do that. Take in the smell of old money <sighs> and let out your frustration. I find the scent of old money to be very cleansing. Okay, Brad is going to go around and help everyone with their posture. Okay, uh, unsparkly top. So it doesn't matter what your name is yet. You two, you, you haven't been here long enough to have a name. So, 
Whatever your name is, I'm sure I don't approve of it and I'm gonna have to come up with a new one anyway. So, Cammie, you're slouching. Bring your shoulders back. No, not that far back. We're not trying to show everything. What you wanna to try to do, if you wanna have perfect posture, is everyone looking? You want to pretend that you're going to make the top of your head touch the ceiling. And if you do that, it will automatically straighten up your spine and your shoulders and everything. Try that. Very good. Now don't stick your nose up in the air. You don't have enough money to do that. Maybe when you get to about a level four. All right. Yes, indeed. Happy birthday to me. How old am I? Okay, as a sparkly friend, you will never ask that question. I want everyone to repeat after me. Age is just a number. Age is just a number. That's right. It doesn't matter if you really mean it, but you just have to look like you do. Because your special friends are going to ask you quite often if the age difference bothers you. And you have to be able to say it like it is just part of your philosophy. Age is just a number. Age is just a number. I don't see age. You're always young at heart. You know. And then let them see the jewelry that they bought you. You're always young at hearts. Or show them your bare ring finger. Whatever it takes. Sometimes you have to improvise. Okay, but since you were rude enough to ask how old I am, I consider age to be kind of a fluid thing. Like, do we really know how old we really are? I, and, and who's to say when your birthday is? I mean, what is a birthday after all? Brad, what is a birthday? The day you were, no, it's not. You are so simple sometimes, Brad. It's no wonder, never mind, I can't say that. Well, I was gonna say it's no wonder he broke up with you. Please don't cry again. Stop. Everything works out for the best for sparkly friends, okay? Huntington's here. I saw him pull up earlier. Yeah, he may be headed out to, out to the stables. Wouldn't that be exciting? Oh my goodness. I think it would be wonderful. So who's to say, who's to say what a birthday really is? It could be, it could be a spiritual birth. It could be a financial birth, um, an intellectual birth, although you may not have many of those. Um, for me, I want to say that my birthday was two weeks ago when I met the vacuum cleaner king of the Southeast region. I'm so excited. My flowers are trembling. Would you like some wine? I find wine is very comforting. In fact, the further I go, the more comforting it is. Or we could go with a nice, lovely pink champagne. Look at that. That's extra special now, isn't it? This came, these glasses that you see in front of you, everyone has one. They are free to take. You're welcome. I brought enough for everyone to have one. These are from my summer home. You may have heard of it. Uh, Biltmore. Yes. I love going there. It's, it's so refreshing when it gets hot here. Mm, cheers to me and my, my two week birthday. <laughs> now remember, when you're dealing with your special friend, Sometimes they can be pretty bold and they can actually ask you your birthday and they want like an actual number. They're not looking for weeks or months or anything like that. They're looking for years and um, this is where it gets tricky. Um, now, Cami, I'm thinking this may not apply to you yet. I don't want to know how old you are because we're not going to discuss that. For the sake of most of this group, especially you, don't smile. It's just, no. For the sake of everyone over here, except for you, I would say, especially you, you're 29. You're always 29 until you start collecting Social Security, and then you're 39. <laughs> uh, 39.99 with Chip and Hamblin. We just round it off to 39. And it's okay to tell them that. Fortunately, a lot of our special friends don't remember what you say very long. So you can turn 29 many, many times and they don't really catch on. 
um, you may have to bump it up to 30, but I find that really only applies after you've been together for several years, like five or six years. And unfortunately, a lot of them have a really short expiration date and they may not make it that long. Yeah. So, okay. So it's to remember, it's just a number, but I feel that my birthday, my special important birthday was two weeks ago when I met Melvin. Don't roll your eyes, Brad. This is very serious. <clears throat> this is very touching. I mean, touch that. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's what I thought. Where's yours, Brad? Oh, I forgot. You were dating a teacher and he dumped you. <laughs> Maybe you want to go out to the stable now. Yeah, he's out there. Well, I'm just saying, you know, maybe if you want to be the curator of the West Wing, you know, you might want to get on that. Oh, yeah, yeah, I'm getting to my point. Thank you. So, Melvin is the vacuum cleaner king, and he's, um, well, of course, you know, he's, he's sort of uh, limited as far as where he can go. So, um, he's in his scooter a lot. So, I end up crouching a lot. I found that certain tops work. When you have when you have to be a croucher for a while <clears throat> they really prefer certain tops um, so that when you crouch you bend down they smile you know don't go with a button-up top or anything like that it's it's um doesn't have the same effect uh, be careful though if they're on heart medication you might not want to bend down too far too often you know I might want to space it out a little bit yeah so tell me um what do you think happens on a sparkly friend's birthday? What does she get to do? Open presents? Uh, yeah, definitely. Uh, we like the ones that don't have to be opened, typically. We like the ones that we can get into and drive. Mm -hmm. And I'm hoping that later Melvin will give me something very special, other than a migraine. But that remains to be seen. I reminded him three times yesterday that it was my birthday, so I'm hoping that maybe at least his assistant picked up on it and will take care of the rest for me. So what else happens on a sparkly friend's birthday? How about you? What do you think happens on a sparkly friend's birthday? They celebrate. Well, yeah, <clears throat> we do celebrate. We do. But what do we do? When you celebrate a sparkly friend's birthday, what do you do? You eat cake? <laughs> You are so precious. I love my new students. Uh, Brad, why are you still here? Honey, I'm only picking, okay? I'm, I'm sorry. I, but sometimes I have to get real with you because you don't, you don't listen, okay? You, you took a whole side trip with that teacher, okay? You, you totally could have gotten him away from that exchange student if you had tried, but you weren't willing to try. So it's not my fault that now you are making up for lost time with Huntington. Not my Huntington. My Huntington is unfortunately warm food now. So, uh, Brad, do we eat cake on our birthday? <laughs> Only after the wedding, exactly. It's kind of a trick question. You can, but only after you say I do. But what do you do on your birthday before that? You're going to be in a situation where you're going to have cake, like this beautiful cake here. Isn't it lovely? Yes, it's red velvet and it smells delicious, doesn't it? Smell. Smell that. It's beautiful, isn't it? But, unfortunately, you cannot eat like this and fit into a decent wedding dress. You know what I mean? Um, no. Only after a wedding dress is no longer required can you really stuff your face with this thing. Of course, after you say I do, Feel free to raid the refrigerator any night and just take like fists of cake and shove them in your mouth along with giant gulps of wine. That will probably become your main meal to go to after you say I do. And then you can waddle your fat ass down the hall and get in your own bed. Lather, rinse, repeat until someone dies. Hopefully not you, although sometimes you may want to. <laughs> so no, until, the bur until we say I do, we don't eat this, mm -mm. but we want them to think we're eating it. So that's where your mime skills come in. 
your mime. Do you know what a mime? Do you know what a mime is? A mime. Uh, people. This is what I get for offering a Groupon. Seriously, you people just. Ugh. Okay, let me explain to you. A mime can make you believe that they're doing something when they're not. They they can use gestures and movements and when you watch them, you believe they're really doing it. You believe it's happening. So you have to learn to be a mime when it comes to your birthday cake because your special friend will expect you to enjoy the cake. Okay? I have napkins for everyone, you see? They are emoji napkins. Melville just recently, Melvin just recently discovered emojis. And, um, the only problem is he still doesn't know how his smartphone works. So he keeps thinking for some reason he's got in his head, if he just shakes the phone, they'll fall out. Like he can, like a salt shaker, like he can shake them out on the ground. And I have not been able to convince him that that doesn't work that way, sweetheart. Let me show you. He keeps drifting off. He keeps nodding off before I can get very far in the lesson. So I'm about at the point where I would give up. So what I did was I found these special emoji napkins, you see? And they have all these little emojis all over them. Mm -hmm. So when he decides he wants some emojis, I discreetly will slip these napkins under his phone when he's not looking with his good eye and then he shakes them and I go, oh honey, look, you covered another napkin. You even got some on the back and he's so happy until three seconds later because he forgets he's like a goldfish that way. But for that three seconds, he's so happy. <laughs> Bless his ancient heart. <sighs> So let's pretend that this napkin is a plate, okay? So you're gonna be in a very fancy restaurant, of course. You're gonna be in a very fancy place, and they're going to bring out a cake for you. Now you have to look very surprised. Now you need to learn to practice your surprise face. Cami, let's see yours. Oh, honey, no, you look like a blow-up doll. No, no you, the mouth can't be that round. See, that looks clearly fake. You really look like a blow-up doll. Look in your look in the mirror. Turn that way. Look in the see. No, that's that's not gonna work unless you're with a special friend that likes that kind of thing. But that trust me, I know I know your uh, friend, and and that's not his thing. You no, don't do that. That's good. Okay, you can do the clap. You don't, of course. Again, we don't make the loud noise. Hearing aids makes a high pitch noise. Don't whistle your s's. You could do, you could do, um, you could do this. <gasps> Although that's really hard to pull off and make it look real. You can do the mouth cover. <gasps> and that really sets off your jewelry. It really makes them notice. <gasps> like that. <gasps> you know, and make your eyes kind of wide, but don't be too obvious. You know, it's very, it's very easy to make it look fake. So they're going to bring out the cake. <gasps> you know, whatever you choose to do, it doesn't matter. They're going to put it in front of you. A bunch of his hired people are going to sing happy birthday to you. And of course you beam and glow and you look at him and you do the little, oh, you don't forget to do that because they love that special attention. Plus it helps jog his memory. So he remembers actually why you're there, that you're with him. He may not remember all the time that you're together. He may think you're his Aunt Eunice from 1928. I mean, that's possible. So, oh. <laughs> However you choose to do it, you really have to sort of tailor it to the situation. I can't tell you exactly what to do. Although, Cammie, watch your nails if you do this, because once I accidentally scratched his cornea, he was a little closer than I thought. He had scooted up in his little scooter, and I did that, and I scratched his cornea, and it ruined the night. We had to go to the emergency room. It was a disaster. Don't do this. Just kind of, you know, thank you. That would be good enough, I think. The prayer and thank you. Thank you. Prayer and thank you. Thank you. I think that would be good enough for your... Um, your special friend. Okay, so we're going to eat the cake. Look at this. All right. Now, chances are you will not be cutting the cake. Okay. There will be a waiter or someone else will be cutting it. So they're going to have something like this. 
it may be silver, it may be, I don't know, could be anything, just some sort of shiny metal, like this. You can actually use it to look at your hair before it gets icing and cake all over it. Now they're gonna come up and they're going to cut the cake. When your special friend nods off, if, if you can do it, it depends on the timing. Grab this from the waiter, shoo them away quickly, and then make like you're cutting the cake. You just take it and slice. Not really gonna slice it. And then we're going to take our plate like this and we're going to pick up the piece, put it on the plate. If your special friend is far enough away, they're not gonna notice because everything is a blur after about 12 inches or so. If you need to, you can cut a piece for your special friend. They might like that. It makes them think you're nice and domesticated and you know, like you would be a good housewife as if you would ever have to do anything domestic. <laughs> you're not going to, but they like the idea of it. Like you're, you know, you're like a good housewife or something. So if you have to, you can cut a piece for them and it would give you a chance to smell the cake because you're not going to be eating it. So maybe you could at least enjoy the way it smells. Let's see, that's what I'm about to explain. Now, this is why you don't put a piece on your plate. You don't actually do it because once that cake is on your plate, it's going to have to disappear, isn't it? Isn't it? Exactly. You can't eat this, okay? Lesson two, we're going to learn to suck on a Cheerio for nourishment. You know, I found that you can live on two Cheerios for weeks. Yeah, don't worry, don't worry. Any, any nutrients that you need to replenish, you can do after the wedding. Yeah, exactly. But if you eat this, if you even think about eating this cake before you say I do, I want you to picture this. I want you to picture it. A picture taking this cake, cutting it in half. So you have these half circle pieces. Imagine taking them and just slapping them on your thighs. Boom, boom, okay? Now imagine how that's going to look in your really, really expensive wedding dress. Let me tell you now, my first wedding dress cost more than my last three houses combined. Okay, it was, it was an Arab chic. It was a long time ago. It's a long story, but trust me, I could not eat this. Just, you might as well just take it and just you know, pull a ripcord on your thighs because that's what's going to happen to you. Oh, it never goes to the places you want it to go, trust me. But, like I said, after you say I do, you can just do like a baby. You can just grab fistfuls of it and just shove it in your mouth because what are they going to do? <laughs> yeah, they may not even remember that you're married to them, so they'll just think you're like a really messy maid or something. So it's, it's probably going to be a, a moot point anyway. Okay? So you have your plates here and, and you're going to keep your friend distracted. You're going to pretend to eat. You're going to take your fork, you know, dab around. You can grab a few crumbs and sort of sprinkle them on the plate as the meal goes along. So it looks like there was once something there um, and then it will look like you finished your piece and then you have to practice looking impossibly full. Like they may ask you, do you want another piece of cake? Oh no, I'm stuffed. I'm, Absolutely stuff. I can eat I can eat another bite. <laughs> and then, you know, just wait until later when you can suck on a Cheerio for nourishment and you'll be fine. Just remember that. So if your tummy rumbles, you got a Cheerio coming later, so it's gonna be okay. Alright. Um so yeah, but here's the thing. Now, I think as a sparkly friend, one of the most important things you can do. Well, what do you think the most important thing is, uh, Groupon? redeeming party. What do you think? Snag a husband? <laughs> Honey, we don't snag. Did you call me a gold digger? Mm. Brad, are we gold diggers? No, we're not. No, we are sparkly friends. I resent that. Gold diggers don't have the refinement and the process that I do, okay? If you want to become a gold digger, well, that's probably why you redeemed a Groupon, and I'm never making that mistake again, okay? We are not gold diggers. We are sparkly friends. Sparkly friends have dignity, as far as you know. Yeah, you keep that in mind, young lady, if you want to learn from me. 
No. For everyone here, the most important thing is making them feel interesting. You want them to feel special and interesting. I can't tell you how many times, you know, these people come to me like my, like my Melvin, bless his heart. He's the vacuum cleaner king. You would think he would feel important every day, but he doesn't. That became abundantly clear to me, you know, within the first day or two of us knowing each other. He said, I'm probably too boring for someone as sparkly as you. I said, oh, Melvin, no. So you have to appear very interested in everything they have to say. You become a mirror to your special friend. Isn't that right, Brad? You become a mirror with a filter. You're like, you're like the best filter anywhere out there on the internet. So that when they look at you, their reflection bounces back and they see themselves through your eyes and they see how fascinating they are or how fascinating they think they are. But you're really good at letting them see how fascinating they think they are. You're like the best mirror. You're like a magic mirror, you know? If you become a truly, um, like a next level sparkly friend, you can take the most bland, vanilla, old dude, uh, I mean, special friend, <laughs> and you can convince him that he is the most interesting man alive. And he will get hooked on that, it's like a drug, and they become addicted to you, and they have to have you around all the time. But you have to remind them occasionally because their memories are kind of shot, like their short-term memory. Yeah, you, some of you may be familiar with that. I know they can remember stuff from 1943, but they can't exactly. So you may have to remind them occasionally of how much they love being around you. Um, you get a feel for it after you've been around them for a while. Yeah, Melvin's, Melvin's okay. I only have to remind him maybe three or four times a day. It's not too terrible. So you want them to remember how great they feel with you. You're like a drug. You're like a drug. And the, they want more and more of you. Yeah, only if they didn't do opium. If they've ever been involved in opium in the past, um, you may have to take a different approach. So, so we have eaten our cake, you know, and do a lot of this, like with your fork, you just kind of, you know, <laughs> oh, hmm. But see, there's nothing on your fork. But they can't really see that because, like I said, you know, more than 12 inches away, everything is just kind of shapes. It's kind of like a newborn baby almost. Everything is just abstract shapes and blobs of color. You know, that's why we sparkle so much. That's why you want to sparkle because you really show off. You're like a giant fishing lure and they're like the biggest bass in the pond or at least, at least the biggest available bass that you can get right now. Yeah. So you want to really shine for them so that they see you and they notice you. And you're not just some bland blob in the background, you know, like a bleh, like a librarian or something like that. You're exciting. You sparkle. You're juicy. Exactly. All right. Uh, I'm going to do a little bonus for you guys because most of you have been pretty decent, I guess. How many of you are comfortable handling gems, jewels? That's, that's not a code for an, and literally, like, we, no, that's for the advanced class. We will not be getting into that here. Not, no, not while we're eating anyway. Trust me. I'm talking about precious stones. How many of you are comfortable handling? That's still not a euphemism. I'm serious. Literally, gemstones. How comfortable are you handling those without completely freaking out? Have you ever done it? Have any of you? I'm still talking about gems. That's, I'm not, it, it's not code for anything. Quit blushing and giggling. And you gotta stop that. You cannot blush and giggle over things because you never know what your special friend is gonna present you with. You never know where you're gonna end up. You may end up digging potatoes in Idaho because they think it's quirky. Okay, I once had to watch 87 episodes of Doctor Who back to back with no sleep. And I did it without batting an eye. You know why? Because he wanted to. You can do it. You can do it. I can even sound just like a Dalek when I need to. But you didn't pay enough to hear that. We're going to practice handling some gems. But since you're all novices, you're going to start with practice gems. You're going to use starter gems. <laughs> Mm 
Now these here, oh yes, they're beautiful. Yes, they are. These are not real. They are plastic. See? These are my starter gems. This is what I start all my students with, you see? They're beautiful, aren't they? They're quite, they're quite lovely, I think. Yes, they are. But I want you to handle these. Now, here's the thing. I do, here's what you want to avoid. You don't want your eyes to bug out of your head because that is the first clue to your special friend that you may not be comfortable in every situation you may find yourself in. And that's what they want. They want you to be adaptable to any situation without completely bugging out. Like I said, digging for potatoes, watching Doctor Who. You have to be ready for anything. Mm -hmm. You have to be down for anything. So say you're out somewhere and they decide to go shopping for jewelry. Maybe jewelry for you. Maybe jewelry for somebody else. Better not be another woman. That's when you have to practice your death stare. Death stare. If you found out he was shopping for jewelry for another woman and she's anywhere nearby, that's when you do the death stare. Of course, you look like this when you look at him, you know, just <laughs> ah, soft clap. <laughs> like that. Like the sea, the seal. <laughs> but when she comes in the room, you drop that as soon as he's not looking. <laughs> And you maintain eye contact with that hussy as long as you need to, to get it across to her that this dusty man is your friend. <laughs> and you do it as long as it takes until she scurries off. And the more you do it, the more soulless you can become. And that's what it's all about. Being sparkly, but being soulless when you have to be. Here, Cammie, take this one. Now pretend I'm, pretend I'm your friend, and I say, Cammie, what do you think of this? All right now, take it like it's no big deal. Because right now it is no big deal, because these are just plastic. This one's blue. I like this one especially, because it's the same color as Melvin's ex-wife's hair. <laughs> I'm saying she's old. She's a blue hair. Yeah, she can't compete with this. I feel really bad though because I had to give her the withering stare and she actually fell and broke her hip. So, yeah, she may not make it to the wedding. What a shame. So, here, take it, take it. Now you're gonna hold it. You're going to examine it. You're gonna have this, okay? This is your monocular. You're going to keep this on you at all times. You can keep it in your cleavage if you need to. You can stick it down in there. You can uh, keep it in your purse, but you need to be able to pull it out at a moment's notice. I'm talking about this. Will you get your mind out of the gutter? So you pull it out, this thing. Look at the gem. You may need to do it when he's not looking, especially if it's a gift for you. You want to make sure it's genuine. You want to make sure it's real, right? You don't want some knockoff. If it's a knockoff, you can call him on it and assert yourself, and he may find that very, very exciting. Don't let him find it too exciting or you may end up in the ER. Chances are you're going to spend a lot of time there anyway. So let's not make it worse. Okay. So you can examine it and make sure it's real. Clearly these are not. Here, give me my stuff back. Mm -hmm. So... We practice with our practice gems, and we get comfortable handling them like this. I'm still talking about these. You're worse than Beavis and Butthead. They may have been a client. You don't know. And then you move on to the real ones. Um, these are from my personal collection. You cannot touch these because I, no offense, but I don't want your little paws on them. When you grow out your active length nails like mine, you have to learn to handle them carefully. Where you can still see them, but not pop one of your nails off, you see. And you admire them, and you want to stare at that big old diamond like it's, like it's just another day, just kind of, <sighs> yeah, it's nice. That's nice. 
Because when you look uninterested, it gives them motivation to really step up their game and do better. Because you know what they're thinking? They're thinking, wow, she really is special. I mean, this doesn't even, this doesn't even impress her. I have to do better. And then they pop out something like that, you see. And that's when you go, ooh, wow. I love it. It's beautiful. Thank you so much. Even if they just gave it to you to look at, you're going to automatically assume it's a gift. Thank you so much. And they're probably going to feel so awkward, they're just going to let you keep it. So even if it doesn't work out with you and your special friend, it's like you get a nice party gift, a little consolation prize for your efforts, which uh, in your case are probably going to be considerable. So I would invest in some good knee pads if I were you. Yeah, um, some shoulder pads. Just get a whole football player's outfit, I'd, I would recommend, yeah. Maybe a trowel and some gardening gear. You'll find out later why. Yeah. Oh, don't worry. You, you, you'll you probably be all right. I'll tell you, though, he's really spry for his age. He will surprise you. <laughs> it's a real adventure. So... I think we've had a really thorough lesson here. I think we've all learned a lot. Well, not me because I already knew all this stuff. But do you guys think you got your Groupon, your Groupon's worth from me? Well, if you don't, you can always leave me a rating. But it doesn't matter because I think it's the last time I'm going to do a Groupon anyway. No offense, but you're like the lowest class group of people I've ever worked with. Don't you think so, Brad? Okay. Well, you guys can have this cake, of course. That trick question is a little trick for you. It's like a pop quiz. Exactly. You wouldn't dream of having this cake. See, you're on the right track already. We would never eat this. We can pretend to eat it. We're not actually going to do it until after we say I do and get out of that dress. Yeah. Okay. Well, just after, see, after the wedding, you can just invest in some sparkly loungewear. Get the kind with the stretchy terry cloth. That's what I recommend. Yeah, and the elastic waist. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you're going to need it. Um, okay. So, yeah, we're not going to eat the cake. <laughs> Smart. Brad and I, you can show yourselves out. Brad and I are going to saunter down to the uh, stable, aren't we? Yeah, because, um, well, see, no, Brad is next level. You guys cannot compete with him. He's been with me much longer than you have. And, uh, yeah, he's doing a little extra credit work. Yes, you are. Come on. It's, it's, you'll get like a gold star. Literally, you might get a gold star if you two get back together. I mean, you know, compared to some of the other stuff he gave you, <laughs> you might literally get like a golden star. But who knows until you try. Come on. Let's go talk to him. It's going to be fine. Yeah. We'll go uh, ride horses and then I'll just excuse myself and leave you two alone. Okay? See, I'm not mean all the time. Sometimes I have to be nice to him. <laughs> okay, great. Well, okay, you group on people. Uh, no, you could take the Biltmore glasses. That's fine. I have plenty. I can always go back and get more. Um, take your glasses. Uh, just leave the chairs where they are. Um, no, don't move them because scooters have to have somewhere to go. Okay, and you can show yourselves out. Just go down there, go down to the west wing, and you'll find the main entrance there, and you could just go out that way. Okay, great. Well, thank you so much to, for coming to your introductory lesson. I hope you don't come back. Um, and that wasn't very nice to me, was it? I hope you do come back, but there won't be any more Groupons. It's like one-shot deal. So you're going to have to actually pay real money next time. Okay, come back, ne come back next time and we'll, we'll discuss, um, we'll practice some genuine laughs and, and looks of interest like, really? So you can't learn that from just anyone. You need, you need, you need lesson two for that. Okay, great. So if you're interested in really becoming a sparkly friend and Cammie, you're going to need all the help you can get. Just, uh, you know where to reach me. Mm -hmm. That's right. Ring twice. Wonderful. Thank you so much, all of you, for coming, and I'll see you again soon.